Welcome back, I'm Dr. Dai, and in this video we're going to take a look at the cell membrane in a bit more detail. The cell's plasma membrane defines its boundaries. It's dynamic, constantly in flux. It is flexible, at least if we're talking about animal cells, right? Plant cells have that uh, cell wall that creates a rigid structure. Uh, it carries recognition markers, plasma membrane, ways for the cell to identify other cells that are self versus non-self, or what type of cell that they are. There's a whole huge range of them. Um, they also are covered in receptors, which play a role in these different signaling pathways. Uh, we use the, called the fluid mosaic model uh, to describe the plasma membrane uh, as a mosaic of components, including phospholipids, cholesterol, proteins, carbohydrates, uh, all that can flow and move and change across the cell membrane. In fact, we even see um, particular areas of the cell membrane um, may have more of a certain type of protein than other sides of that same cell. Um, they, they have specific locations even that they can end up on, and some are evenly distributed. It just depends on the type of molecule. So the plasma membrane, like we've already talked about, it's primarily made up of um, a bilayer of phospholipids with embedded proteins, carbohydrates, glycolipids, glycoproteins, um, and in animal cells, cholesterol. Um, the main fabric of the membrane is this two layers of the phospholipid molecules, right? Um, hydrophilic polar ends, um, which are in contact with the aqueous fluid both inside and outside of the cell. So we, you know, polar heads, we call them those little, look like little pin heads. Um, so those are hydrophilic, they like water. And then the interior part of the membrane is made up of these hydrophobic tails. So they're non-polar fatty acid tails. Um, and those tails do not like water. So they turn towards each other with the polar heads on top and bottom attracted to the water. So they, if they're free in solution, the tails are drawn to each other to get away from the water. Uh, the second major component of the plasma membrane is proteins. Um, proteins can serve as channels, uh, as pumps, as enzymes on either side of the surface of the plasma membrane. Um, they can be structural attachment points, um, and they are also part of the cell's recognition sites. In the image that we have on our slide, um, we can actually see an HIV molecule docking um, to the CD4 uh, receptor site on a CD4 T cell. Um, this is CD4 receptor is a glycoprotein on the surface of, of CD4 helper T cells. Um, and the HIV uh, viral particle binds to that receptor and tricks the cell into then bringing the virus inside um, where it then does, does what it does. Um, but it's not the only virus that uses uh, our own receptors against us. Um, we found uh, COVID, the coronavirus that caused the COVID-19 pandemic, um, also uh, took advantage of certain types of receptors, particularly on respiratory system cells and a whole array of other ones as well. Now, the third major component of the plasma membrane uh, are carbohydrates. So, right, sugars. Uh, they're always found on the exterior surface of the cells and are either bound to proteins, we call those glycoproteins, or they're bound to lipids, so we call those glycolipids. Um, carbohydrate chains can be anywhere from two to 60 monosaccharide units long. Uh, they can be straight, like a long chain. Uh, many of them are branched, so we'll have like a chain with branch points coming off of it that form particular structures that allow for that very specific, unique recognition. Um, carbohydrates form specialized sites on the cell surface that allow the cells to recognize each other um, and to tell the cell what kind of uh, cell you are. Another thing that cells use these structures for is to display. So certain cell types, like if they get infected with a virus, will then display viral particles so that the immune system sees it and goes, uh oh, this cell is infected. We need to take care of this. All right. All right. Thank you for joining me again. That was a little shorter, right? A little bit, a little bit easier to get through. Um, so now that we better understand the structure of the cell membrane and the structure of cells in general, um, we're ready to talk about how things are transported across it. So in our next two videos, we're gonna look at the different ways that uh, materials are moved 
across the membrane, both from outside to inside, inside to outside the cell. All right, I will see you there.